This truly is the maiden voyage. Hopefully it's not the Titanic. <laughs> Iceberg! We've had a few icebergs here. Uh, no, not really. I mean, but that's the thing about this whole turnaround things with laughter is there really aren't any big deals. There aren't any icebergs. There's nothing that's going to sink you. No. If that's how you approach it. But so many people get into like a, uh, a version of life that is filled with fear, doubt, worry, and it takes them down. And then they look for people to collude. I just can't be one of those people. I know you're the same way. I just can't go, hey, yeah, you're right. You do have it bad. Yeah, you're, you are really sick. You, you know, I mean, it's hard for me to not share what I know, and that is you can get through anything. Yeah. Every, yeah. every day you can change your life. I yeah. say that constantly to lots of people. You have total control about what you do every day, even if that means going to work even if that means you know you can take a walk you can meet friends and play board games you can always change the course of your life for the better you no one should sit and dwell if you're at home yeah. and you, you know even if there's a storm or when we had the pandemic you can't go outside okay take up yoga you can always do something to make your life happier there's an alternative to everything and they say misery loves company what's the opposite of that do you think i mean misery loves company but um so Happiness loves <laughs> everyone. Lo 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 loves a community. Yeah. You know, you make a community and you can make a community of two people. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But the community should, I believe, my experience is, exist on something positive, on, exist on finding solutions. And that's really why I have this podcast. This is my solution. It's my solution is have the podcast, have guests on like you, and like other people that are going to share these uh, kind of like, uh, it's like hacks, that's a new word, by the way. Do you know about hacks? No. <gasps> really? I know hacks the TV show. Oh, what? very good show, by the it's way. Great show. Yes, I've known the star of that since she was born. Hannah. Yeah, it's and so I did, weird. I did Hannah's first. Um, we did a little um, web series thing together. So her first time on camera when she was in um, maybe college um, was with me. No way! I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, oh, is she talented, so incredible on that show. Well, look at the pedigree she comes from. Definitely. First cast member of Saturday Night Live, Lorraine Newman, yep. and Chad Einbinder, her father, is like hilarious, like one of the funniest people ever, and he's a director, actor, writer. But uh, so she comes from good pedigree. Can you teach comedy? Um, In your belief, can you teach comedy? Can you teach people how to be funny? Um, you can teach anything. I, I, people can be inherently funny. Like there are people who are just naturally funny. I think. Um, I think you could teach someone to say funny things and that would make people laugh. They might not understand why it's funny. Does that make sense? It, it, makes, sen <laughs> it makes sense. I don't agree with it, though. Okay. I don't I, agree with it. It does make them? sense in yeah. the head. It makes sense. I had a TV show idea years ago that, was, that moved up and almost got made that was kind of a takeoff on um, of Dancing with the Stars where you would – team up someone who is famous but not famous for being funny with a stand-up comic yeah then they would um kind of create a set called sets right in comedy like yeah. a set for them to go up where it would be their little um routine or whatever their their comedy show but they didn't come up with the funny does that make Sh sense where they uh, yeah. deliver it and it would be funny and people would laugh so sure you can teach people to be funny and now you can tell me why that's wrong uh, well <laughs> I actually i had a show with whoopi goldberg called joke a -Roki, where instead <laughs> of karaoke they told they told comedy they did comedy bits from famous people okay. like someone would come up and do hey uh, hey, hey. You know, do rodney da that was uh, rodney dangerfield <laughs> <laughs> clearly hey, i'll tell you i'll tell you <laughs> A doctor slapped my mother. So what? But but so you would see them do that. So was, no, you it, can't it very, teach people to be funny. But you, <laughs> I can't teach myself at this point. So we were teasing though on something that you did take a course on how to do social media, mm -hmm. which has worked. Now, if I were approaching that, I'd say I don't know how to do social media. No one can teach me. So you tell me some of the nuggets that you learned in that course that you can let us in on so maybe some of us can be better at social media because we didn't grow up with it. Yeah, so, social media is just one of those things. I, I didn't jump into the whole social media thing early on. 
I was forced to do join Facebook at one point, or not Facebook, MySpace. MySpace <laughs> was kind of my intro into social media. Didn't really understand it. Um, I was late to joining Instagram and probably Facebook and everything else. But I I do think there's a way to do it. I, I write different things on my private Facebook page than I do on the public one. Same, yeah. Um, although now somehow somehow my Instagram is linked to my, my private page. So they, they probably see more seatbelt selfies of me than they want to. But um, I know I get them on both. I yeah. get them. Oh, my Facebook. Oh, there you are. Oh, Instagram. There you are. That's yeah. how I start my day all the, with all the you. Platforms are different. They're just, you know what I mean? They're all different. So, you know, on Twitter, which I don't call X, it's still Twitter to me. You know, you have to be able to communicate in, in a very short short bites. So it's kind of figuring out who the audience is, is the most important thing and who you're talking to. So if you have a social media account and you're trying to do something like you want to be a, um, you want to talk about cooking, then you have to stay true to that. Oh. And so your post should be geared towards who your audience is on social media. If it's your private, private social media, you're talking to your friends from elementary school and yeah. college and high school and, and now. And so you just can talk about yourself. But I would say if you're doing public social media platforms, it, it helps if you have a, a clear audience in mind. A clear audience and a clear intent and clearly who you are. I've had the difficulty of, and I, you might have this, is I'm not just a cook. I actually cook too. And we fish, right? And we'll post fishing. We'll post, but we're not going to have a fishing show or whatever it is. That's not what we're known for. But what do you say about the, uh, the, the diversity of who we are, you and I especially? You know, there is no limits. Yeah. There's no limits but, to where we will go. But that can, be, that can be who your audience is. I mean, for me, I have no goal with social media. I'm not trying to get work from it. I'm not monetizing it. So I don't, I don't post ads. I don't do any of that on social media. I am kind of just talking about my life. And I'll talk about maybe a charitable cause that's important to me. Or I'll talk about a vacation I'm taking and things like that. So I, I don't have necessarily the focus because... It's, I don't have a goal with it. Does that make sense? Some people uh, yeah. are trying to sell a product line or right. they're you know, trying to get on a TV show or they're trying to be an influencer. I don't want to be an influencer. I'm just being myself. And, and I have heard from people that that does sometimes influence them. But I am very clear. I don't post any negative content. Your, 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 goal, your goal would be authenticity. Yeah. But nothing negative. I don't talk politics. But that's I authentically who you yes, are. You, you're not who into do it and talking about those things. I've been with you in private. Yeah. You know, and I mean. I still, don't, I still don't go towards negativity. I just don't. Except when you're talking about how I look. <laughs> you asked. Honesty. I just, you asked. Well, you just said no negativity. No, I took it as promise. very, very negative. <laughs> Terrible. I never would walk in and say, Craig, you look horrible. You asked me, do I look horrible? And well, he's got makeup now. He looked worse before. <laughs> oh, my God. Honesty. I didn't. Wait, wait a minute. I didn't ask for that. You, that was unsolicited. You piled on. Jeez, you're supposed to be so positive. Now I'm going to think the rest of the day how bad I look. I have other podcasts to do. You got makeup now. You're better. Oh, my God. This is terrible. Why are you my first guest? Because you know that I'll go along with you. You know what it is? You know what it is? I got to know you. I got to know you through the years, and you really are a very special person. You, you, we don't hang out all the time. I, I've never even been to your house. Mm -mm. I've heard about it. <laughs> Someday, maybe after this, I'll get invited to your house. But we've hung out, and it's just it, the reason you're in our core group. You're in our core fishing group of a bunch of guys that I, I you know, I'm, I'm kind of the central person of all of bringing all those people together. But I don't know if you've noticed this, but when I do bring people together, there's no common theme except for they're all good people. Yep. Very right? True. Rocky? Yeah, great guy. Jimmy? Great guy. Not even in show business? Gregory, great guy, great people. Now, what do you think it means when I say when I say my opinion is they're great people? I believe you also believe it. Absolutely. What do you think it is the core values or the core of who those people are in our core group? That's the core group. Yeah. What do you think it is about that? Like, why why is it that every one of us thinks, oh, Aaron has to be included in this group text. She, she's got to be included on the next trip. Or, or Gregory has to be. Or we had to make up for Gregory because he had to go to a funeral before. What do you think that is that brings that particular group together? I, I think a few things. I think we all lead with kindness. I think we're all able to laugh at ourselves. 
yeah. I think we're inherently funny <laughs> and smart. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I think that you want to surround yourself with people who are positive and we go and we have fun and, and no one complains. No. So it's, it's kind of no. about things happen. It's like you get hurt, you can get sunburned. All these things can happen while you're fishing, but we can all laugh at ourselves and have fun with it. So yeah. I think we're all great people. I have to tell you what happened the other day. Oh, I felt no. so bad. Well, it's not a no, no. So we went out one time. I'm talking to the people out there. We, we, we go out one time and at the last minute, Gregory couldn't make it because his best friend, Treat Williams, passed away and he had to go to the funeral. But we we're like, okay, but we're still going. We had the most magical catch that day. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Sea bass. I still have some in my freezer. I do too, <laughs> which I'm going to get to in a second. 18 35 pound plus sea bass. We're reeling them in like, like we're just dipping into the water and pulling these things out. And poor Gregory not only is burying his best friend, but, but he, he missed it. Best, best fishing day ever. So, so I was with him the other day, and he's still, he's still talking about it. We were golfing oh. the other day with Jimmy. And I said, Yeah, it's too, he goes, Yeah, and I had to see it. I had to see it on Facebook. I had to see it on Instagram. He couldn't get away from it because uh, there we are with our big fish and our big catch. Then we go out again. We took him out as like the, the mulligan, like the makeup. Nothing. Minnows. <laughs> we caught minnows all day. But um, I just love that camaraderie. Uh, it's just the, the fishing's like the background. You know, that's just, that's just part of it. And it doesn't really matter how much, you, I mean, that one day that was unbelievable how many we caught and another day we don't catch as many, but it's about the, the hang. It's about, totally. it's about that being the goal is to let's get together and have a good time. And to me, when we talk about the turnaround in life is like, how can you find those moments and those people in your life? And you can find them in a snap. Yeah, you, ha you have to make them. Yeah, You have to exactly. make those moments. So, I mean, I'll do things. I play board games with friends a lot where I'll have a group of girlfriends over and we'll play board games at my house. Or if, if someone doesn't invite you to something, you create the, you create the right. moment. I go hiking with a couple girlfriends once a week. I, there are things that you, those moments are precious and you make them happen. So right. I do things. I like poker. So I play in celebrity poker things anytime they ask me because I'm good at it. It's fun. It's kind of the same camaraderie yeah. at your table until, yeah. until they go away and you move up to the final table. And what you always <laughs> do, I'm sure. Do you win these things too? Like you do the fishing? I'm good. I'm good at poker. Wow. You have been blessed <laughs> since birth. Literally. How many people are born and are given to television show? It's one of the top shows on television. How many times does that happen? I've been seeking my whole life to be on a television show and it hasn't happened yeah. once. I appreciate that. It I, I, I acknowledge that I'm lucky, but I think that I, sometimes I make the luck. Well, what's really odd about part of your luck is you have a sister. A twin sister, and people might not know this, when you're cast in television when you're a child, and it still goes on today, I guess it's child labor laws, they have to cast twins, right? They don't, they don't have to. They do, really? They do regularly, not always, huh. if, it's, if it's a baby on a, on a TV series. They don't have to, but they do. But my sister and I are fraternal twins. I know. We really don't look alike and as babies we didn't look identical even as babies so mm. they would show my sister um, diane from the back or from a distance um, the producer bill asher would say okay it's time to bring diane on and they would bring me off set and then they would bring me back on set to kind of pretend that she was that i was my sister to get wow. a, a, around the social worker but um yeah i was lucky <laughs> so you're not mistaken for one another oh no we don't look alike no really yeah no i've yeah, never i've never sister. met your oh, yeah. sister no, no, no. We're different different heights and coloring and everything. Wow. Yeah, no, we don't look. We look like sisters, probably. We don't look like. So sisters. no one goes up to her and say, "Were you Tabitha and Bewitched?" No one no, goes I don't up think to her. So, no. Right. Uh, that that that's incredible. So they mostly used you, but they have to do this switch thing because you'll be exhausted, and that's what I'm saying about the child labor laws is they don't want to do that to a child. Yeah, back in the '60s and '70s, they did that to a child. <laughs> But my, my sister only shared the part with me on Bewitched for the first season. Then after that, I was older and could work more hours. It kind of changes as you get older. And you, you, you had basically uncles and aunts. I can't say the word aunt. I feel so phony. You know, I'm authentic. Aunt. I can't say it. People say that's how, how you're you supposed to say it. How do you say it? Aunt. Yeah. Oh, you do too. Yeah, they're aunts. They're not aunts, are they? Well, 
if you talk aunt. to most of our audience, especially no. certain cultures, they'll say that's my auntie. No, I have my Aunt Leslie and Aunt Barbara. Hi, Aunt Leslie, Aunt Barbara. I, I know Aunt Leslie's watching. <laughs> yeah, hi, Aunt Barbara. I don't. That's my mom's aunt. name. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you, but most people say aunt because no, that really is. Don't say most. I think you're wrong. Can we do a poll? <laughs> that's perfect. Okay, so we're going to bring this to the next episode. We're going to have a poll. Okay, it's and I, and I want you to uh, s spell it A N T for the poll. Is that's the way you say it, or uh, A U N T would be the other. Okay, so you're going to vote. This is something that really has bothered me. A lot of pronunciations bother me on how they say. It. How do you say the word T O U R N A M E N T? T O U R N A M E N T. Tournament. But you say tournament. Okay. Tournament. You and I differ now. How do you say it? I was with you on the aunt and the aunt. I was with you on that. <laughs> how, do how do I say it? I say it the right way. What is the correct way? Tournament. 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 <laughs> Tournament. <laughs> Tournament. It's got the word tour in it. Yes, not tur. <laughs> You're saying tur. You Springsteen doesn't go on tur. Tomato, tomato. He, no, <laughs> it, it, no, on this one is no motto, mato. Is, this is a t fact is potato, Springsteen potato. doesn't, come on, dudes, we're going on tur. One, two, three, fur. He doesn't say that. He says four and tour Tournament. That's how you say it. Tournament. Tournament. You're it starting matter. to get it. It does matter. <laughs> Just like ant matter. Ant matters to you. Well, tournament Neither means something one matters to me. To me. <laughs> if someone says aunt to me, I'm, I don't care. Say it however you like. No, Lovely that's, viewers. That, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. No, you make a stand. If you're no. authentic. You make a stand. You no. made a stand with how I look. You make you a stand. You, I he looked awful. You all would have agreed with me. He looks better now. <laughs> being around all this love thank you that, i didn't say you <laughs> i'm so the people are working over here it's oh. around their love they brought the love so tournament okay okay all right talk about accent differences i gotta tell you a story i was playing in this golf all right i'll Where say are you supposed to wrap up uh, we're, we're, i'm gonna leave i'm gonna leave the story wait do you see with this story when, when we come back it's a good one and we're gonna hear more from you because i want to know the question i was getting at is how much your aunts <laughs> and your aunts and your uncles and your uncle uncles how much influence they had on you because those were the people that we grew up watching and i want to know what they were like in real life uncle paul lind i wrote to him i wanted him to be my father i wanted him to adopt me and a lot of people on that show i absolutely love them and i'm sure they had a huge influence on you we're going to talk about what that influence was and i hope you all come to the next episode whenever that is all right we'll see Bye. you there.